Hello, my name is uh, Claudia Gamondi, and I would I would first uh, want to thank you, uh, my uh, Russian colleagues, uh, for having invited me to their interesting webinar on uh, oncology and. Uh, uh, for having given me the opportunity to share our experience here in the Oncology Institute of Southern Switzerland, uh, where we have uh, um, a long experience of integration between palliative care and oncology. Hmm. What I have been invited to talk about uh, is uh, not only what palliative care is, uh, but mainly uh, their principle of symptom management, uh, how we do um, the end of life care, but most of all, how palliative care applies to oncology in our setting and internationally. First of all, uh, I would like to share with you the um, definition that the World Health Organization has given uh, to palliative care. Um, it sounds uh, quite uh, simple, but uh, it is important uh, to have a common definition of uh, palliative care and uh, to share the goals uh, and uh, the means that palliative care uses for achieving its goals with the patient and the family. As you can see, palliative care looks like an approach with, that has the aim to improve the patient quality of life. We always uh, take into account also their families uh, because life-threatening diseases and uh, the metastatic cancer with short prognosis involves uh, very often also the families and their beloved ones. What is um, the aim is the prevention and the relief of suffering by the means of an early identification of uh, the nature of the suffering and uh, the assessment and treatment, uh, not only of pain, but also all the other problems that may be uh, physical, psychosocial and spiritual. What palliative care at nowadays is, is an excellent and evidence-based medical treatment, is the intensive care of pain and all the other symptoms that may become apparent in the last months and weeks and days of patients' lives. And uh, it's an approach that is synchronous and uh, needs to be done at the same time as uh, oncological treatments uh, for metastatic disease. What palliative care is not, uh, is not giving up on the patient, uh, is not care given instead of a curative or life prolonging care and is not the same as the what is called in the US hospice care, which is the care devoted to the last days of life. Here you can see that palliative care is an approach that may start early when the life limiting disease is diagnosed and when palliative chemotherapy or radiotherapy or surgery are still on board in the patient possibilities. We start here with a very attentive symptom management and an approach that has been that is aimed to maximizing patients quality of life. When 
patients become more frail and cancer develops and spreads through the body, we start talking about the end of life care, which is the care of patients, as you can see, uh, in the last weeks or few months of their lives, where we try to uh, focus uh, more not only on symptom management but also on spiritual care, psychosocial support uh, and uh, with or without uh, oncological treatments uh, like chemo or radiotherapy with a palliative intent. Then we come to the last days or hours of life uh, and we talk about terminal care where spiritual care and the control of the symptoms of the terminal phases and days of life is predominant. Where should we do palliative care? Basically, palliative care should be done where the patient is. So we can do it at home, in acute hospitals, in palliative care specific dedicated units, in hospices, nursing homes, long-term care. And we can do as what we call first line, so palliative care specialists direct to have the responsibility of the patient care and treatments or in consultancy where, for example, the patient is hospitalized in an oncological department undergoing oncological treatments and the palliative care makes their rounds and do consultancy help to the oncologist to help and complete the symptom management and the psychosocial support. As you can see here, there are two different levels of palliative care, what that are the general palliative care, which is the one where symptom control and psychosocial support is given by the oncologist or specialist palliative care where more complex cases are handled by either the oncological team and the palliative care team together or by the specialist palliative care team mainly. What palliative care should be should be patient-centered, so it's really important to focus on patient needs and resources and also families' needs and resources, is constituted by an effective in, uh, uh, treatment for alleviating distressing symptoms always needs to be interdisciplinary and always needs to be integrated in standard care as we said before, oncological treatments or radiotherapy or so on. What should be done in support for the patient is that we need to provide the patient with a meticulous symptom control, an aggressive treatment of suffering, a multidimensional approach, and always in respect of patient's autonomy and wishes and preferences, not only on the place of care, but also the type of treatments that he or she wants. Always, of course, provide comfort care in the last days or hours of life. What do we do every day? We do a pain and symptom control with medications like opioids, neuroleptics or so on. And in addition, with chemo and radiotherapy that is given to control symptoms that are sensible to those treatments. We always work on the psychosocial dimensions, for example, anguish, depression, and social distress and family distress with the spiritual worker and the social worker and where we are lucky, we, all, we also have a psycho-oncologist in our team. We do support of the existential dimension with spiritual care. 
we always communicate decisions and share with patients and families their decisions about goals of care and what is relevant and important for the patient. And we coordinate the care through the always and often fragmented medical system. So for example, we coordinate care between home and hospital in the, during the hospitalizations, for example, for symptom control and the return home of the patient who needs always care, nursing and medical care also when he is home. We need to be interdisciplinary in palliative care. So you can see here all the different professions that are involved in patient care. Of course, this is very unique sometimes to the resources that the healthcare system provides to the oncological patients. So for example, here in Ticino, we all have a dietitian, a psychologist, nurses and physicians, we have a chaplain and we have a social worker. For example, in other centers, there are more rich than us and they have a music or an art therapist and they also have speech therapist or an occupational therapist. These these professional um, are working together in a multi-professional way where we share in teams goals of care and then each profession provides its specific support and intervention to the patient while sharing common goals between single professions and patients and families. As you can see, there are different components of palliative care. We have the physical component of pain and other symptoms, but then we have the psychological uh, and psychiatric sometimes component of the disease. We have social, spiritual, we have cultural components. I imagine that where you are in Russia, there is a different culturality, very different from the one we have in Switzerland or the one we can have in Spain or other countries in the world. And these cultural comp components should be taken into account and should be respected for patients and families. Then there is always an ethical component in difficult decision making, withholding or withdrawing treatments, do not resuscitation codes, discussions and implications. And then we have always a legal component, for example, for opioid prescription or um, hast and death procedures in countries where these are, for example, possible uh, on legal terms. In specific, um, we um, should take into account uh, this important paper uh, published by Nathan Cherney in 2003, which is uh, still very relevant to the oncological dimension of palliative care, where the you know, European School of Medical, Society of Medical Oncology uh, has produced uh, these nine core skills uh, that you can see here, uh, that they describe the relevant interventions uh, that the oncologists and the palliative care physicians and the teams should take into account for the patient treatments. What is important to understand is when um, palliative care starts. Very often palliative care is believed to start very close to death. Modern palliative care vision tends to support a very early intervention in 
very early stages of the metastatic disease where, as you can see here, disease focused care are still ongoing when comfort focused care like palliative care is started. And these two treatments must be embedded together in the patient treatment. How you can see here how we can integrate palliative care with oncology practice has been very well described by David Huey in 2013. Um, David works in, in the MD Anderson Cancer Center in the palliative care department. And as you can see here, it's uh, um, very well described that uh, the um, model where the C here uh, model um, palliative and supportive care team must be very well integrated with the cancer assessment and treatments. And we do not have to provide a model where we use a palliative care only as a consultant in the last days and weeks of life. So this is a broad overview of how to um, implement palliative care intervention in an oncology department. And uh, I stop here my recorded uh, webinar and I will be delighted to share with you in the Zoom session questions and um, impressions and experiences of your palliative care team where you are. So looking forward to having a, in a more, uh, inter more interaction with you, I will um, close my intervention. Uh, thank you very much. Jenny. Dovrebbe essere, l'ho messa in pausa Jenny al momento e sono stata nei 14 minuti. Ok, adesso Avevi quanto in totale? Eh? Avevi quanto in totale? Mi danno quello che mi devono dare. Cosa devo fare? Ora è in pausa. In pausa, quindi mi hai detto altro. altro. Termina riunione. Ok. Termina riunione per tutti.